what a week this has been. Let me just start by saying that as I pop my green beans in the air fryer. Hi, we're doing a cook with me. That's what we're doing today and we're talking about friendships and all that shit. So I'm just gonna get that started as I get into it. What is in the air right now? <laughs> what is in the air? I wanna know because I have had a weird week and a lot of reconnections or attempted reconnections have occurred in the past week. In this year already, four people from my past have kind of hit me up and stuff. I'm making salmon with broccoli, green beans, and rice. The rice is already cooked, thank God. So that's what I'm cooking, and as I cook, I'm gonna talk about what's on my mind, because it's on my mind and I need to talk about it, okay? Okay, let's go in closer, shall we? There we go. Yes, that's better. So, the reason why I'm making this video is because I feel inspired. Something is clearly in the air, I don't know what. I've had two former friends reach out to me in the past like five days, and in that time, I also reached out to an old friend, which is really interesting. It was just like all this like reconnection type energy happening. So, I guess I'll just quickly tell you like what happened. So, one of my, sorry, one of the two people that reached out to me are actually the same sign, and it's my moon sign, which is interesting. One of them reached out, for whatever reason she reached out. Honestly, my interpretation of her reaching out is very different than what she thinks the message was. And the other one reached out to reconnect. And then, like I said, I reached out to an old friend because it was something that was on my mind for a while. And although I was fully prepared for potential rejection, I was okay with that because at least I knew, you know, I did my part. And if, if you're not interested, that's okay. Because to me, it's like, whatever's meant for me won't miss me. And if that friendship is not meant for me, and that's how she feels, and that's totally fine, I respect that. But now I don't have to look back and be like, what if, you know? So, anyways, that's a whole other thing, which I probably won't get into in this video. But, yeah, two friends of mine reached out. Um, one of them was to reconnect, and I was very open to it. I really was. We were childhood friends. We haven't talked in, like, seven years. And, honestly, I'd love to know how she's doing and then the other one reached out because she felt triggered by a video that I made and although she says that she reached out to clear the air it's very evident that she was just trying to clear her name it was one of those messages that was just her trying to rewrite the narrative on how and why our friendship ended and it's very clear that I made the right choice because I don't believe that she is in the right headspace to understand why it ended. I have a lot to say today, just a heads up. I'm in a mood. I am in a mood. I'm making salmon. Oh, that's bright, wow. This is salmon, okay? I'm making broccoli, and I have green beans in the air fryer, so sorry for the noise. I know it's probably a little bit annoying, but I don't have a choice. It's not always a good choice to reach out to an old friend, and sometimes it is. It might not end up the way that you wanted it to, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad choice. So for example, in my instance, I did not receive a response. And honestly, I sent the message assuming I wouldn't receive a response, if I'm being honest. Um, mostly because it was a while ago, you know. I still did it, I still did it, and I don't regret it because it is what my heart felt was necessary. I wanted to reconnect and just see how someone was doing and talk and whatever. You know, just talk about the past, potentially reconnect. And I also spoke to my spirit guides about it and I was like, if it's not meant for me and if it's not in my highest good, I don't want it. And the lack of response to me, I guess says that. Like maybe it's just not what's good for me right now or maybe I'm not what's good for that friend, you know? I don't know. All I know is that I made the choice to do it and I don't regret it. So I wanted to talk about like, that potential rejection that you may face or I don't like to call it rejection but you know the the lack of response that you might get or not get or um, the fear around reaching out to an old friend and I want to talk about just the different sides and like aspects to it so I think it's important that when we're making the choice to reach out to people we really understand for ourselves why we're doing it all right so step one figure out why you want to reach out that is the most important part is it to clear the air is it to clear your name is it to apologize is it to be friends again is it because you miss them is it because they were a good friend and you fucked up and you are ready to acknowledge that like what is the reason because i find that 
I had friends reach out to me in the past and I took them back and I quickly realized that the reason that they reached out was like probably just that they missed having fun with me, which isn't enough. So what is your reason? Is it because you miss having fun with someone or is it because they were a good friend and you fucked it up or you know things went south? Figure that out because that is very important. Ooh, these look good. Salmon is going on the pan. Damn, not even a sizzle? I thought it was gonna sizzle. Wow, it's not even hot yet. <laughs> I think step number two is preparing yourself for potential rejection. Again, I don't really like to call it rejection. To me, there's no rejection, just redirection. You need to accept that there is a big chance they might ignore you. You might send them the most sentimental message and they might ignore you. Are you okay with that? Can your ego take that? Can your heart take that? Figure that out before doing anything because I'm telling you, if you have a big ego and somebody doesn't reply after you pour your heart out to them, you're not gonna be okay after that. Thankfully, that's not who I am. I am perfectly like okay with that idea because I truly believe that my spirit guides, God's got me, you know, like, so I just try and trust the universe and trust them. It knows what's best. So make sure you understand that about yourself before making the choice. The next thing you gotta think about, what method of communication do you wanna use? How are you gonna reach out to them? What are you feeling? Is it, is it a phone call type of vibe? Is it a long text? Is it an essay of a DM? Is it a email? What do you think is best for you? I'll tell you what I did. I did an email. I don't really know why. I think it just felt right. It was just kind of like, I don't want this to have to live in your phone um, and you feel forced to respond. I want it to be like a, it's in your email, you see it amongst other things, in two days or one day, it'll refresh with a bunch of new emails, you won't see it. So if you want to reply, you'll go out of your way to do it. And if you don't, you won't. You know, email's just easy. It's less personal. I, I don't know, it just felt right to me. So yeah, you could phone call them, you could text them, whatever you think is appropriate to the relationship that you had or that you want to have, you know, that's what you gotta figure out. I think that a very neutral and safe way to go about it would be email or a phone call. I don't know why text doesn't feel right to me for some reason. It just feels very like, like you know when you like break up with someone over text, it's not okay? To me, it, it felt the same. I don't know why. Phone call, it depends on the person. If they're a very anxious person, you don't really want to stress them out and catch them off guard. The next thing I want you to think about is what are your expectations? Do you have any? And if you do, are they realistic? Like, what are your expectations? For example, do you think you're going to reach out to this person and you guys are going to be like besties like you were a couple years ago and things are going to go back to normal? If that's how you feel, like you kind of got to check yourself. You got to go in with like no expectations, to be honest. Otherwise, you could be disappointed. You don't want that. It's hard enough to send that message. Like, trust me, I just did it. Like, I know what it's like to send that message. I was, I was nervous. I was like, oh my God, like she's probably not going to respond, blah, blah, blah. You know, like I felt a way. Like, it's not just like, ooh, send for me. Like, I definitely read it 10 times over before sending it because it's always difficult to do that. There's like... I guess a level of pride that might kick in when you're doing it. For me, I didn't really feel that way because I just, again, I just know that it's what my gut and my heart felt the need to do. And maybe it was a healing thing for me to just send it, whether I got a response or not, you know? So I don't worry too much about that. But in the past, I've definitely like had that experience where I messaged a friend and I was a little nervous and I was like, oh God, like, what if I get ignored? Can I take that? Oh my god, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. What are your expectations? And if they're high, you need to work on that and kind of, like, lower them? Is that the word? Um, get rid of them? I don't know. Now you gotta think about what is your approach? Are you going for the sentimental approach? Reminiscent? Are you going for the let's just talk it out approach? Are you going for the I'm sorry approach? I mean... I think it's important to note that like out of respect there's a lot of things that if you think it's important to you you'll try to do it in person for me like I knew that there was probably you know some faults on my end that need to be discussed but I also just think 
It doesn't need to be discussed over email, especially if the person's not interested. I'm not gonna send an essay of an email to someone who doesn't give a fuck. I'd rather send them a little mini blurb and if they wanna discuss it, let, I'll let them know I'm open to it. And that's what I think is important to do. I don't think you need to send an I'm sorry essay to someone if, you know, I don't know. Like, I just feel like, to me, sending an I'm sorry essay Depending on the relationship and the person, but to me, it's, it feels like it's more for your own peace of mind and ego. You feel the need to do this because it's going to help you sleep at night, not because you genuinely care that the person deserves an apology. Because to me, I just feel like I would rather open up dialogue and tell them in person or over the phone. But everyone's different. Like, I received a very long apology essay message a while back in like January, February, and I, I, didn't, I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all, and I didn't respond to it. Yeah, like, again, there's that chance they won't respond. I didn't respond to one of the people that messaged me, and then I responded to the other one, and then I hit up the other one. You know what I mean? Like, it's going to vary per friendship, so don't even try and predict it, bro. Like, you really can't predict it, and I need everyone to really understand that because you'll save yourself a lot of, like, stress if you just go into it. No, it's not expecting the worst, but like, yeah, I'm kind of expecting the worst, you know? So now I want to kind of just talk about like, should you do it? Should you reach out to your old friend? Hold on. These, look at how stupidly these cabinets are designed. Isn't that so dumb? When I let go, it closes. So dumb. Anyways, should you reach out to your friend? I mean, only you know the answer to that. But to me, I think it's yes. There's a reason why they're on your mind. Whether it's you want to cuss them out, whether it's you want to apologize, you want to reconnect, you want to clear your name. If it brings you peace, do it. To me, the message that I received from my former friend where she was trying to clear her name, I'm sure it brought her peace, you know? She felt triggered, like I said, and she felt the need to clear her name, and that's okay. We see it differently and that's okay. And it probably brought her peace. She probably wrote it out and was like, okay, now Ashley knows. Do I agree? No. However, I'm sure it helped her in her healing process. Not saying she needs to heal from our friendship breakup. She might be just fine. I don't fucking know. What I'm saying is I'm sure that it brought her some type of peace. Otherwise, she wouldn't have felt the need to do that. She wouldn't have. So if you're feeling something in your gut or, you know, it's, it's sitting with you and it's bugging you, like, by all means, Damn, it's really smoking up. <laughs> By all means, send that message, bro. Send it. Because you won't regret it. I don't think she regrets sending me that. I don't think my other friend regrets sending it to me. And I don't regret sending my message. I just think that we should always choose our own peace over anything. And if reaching out to your old friend does that, then hey, I can do it. I also think that there are instances in which you know, you can gain back a beautiful friendship because of it. And that's amazing. Like, who doesn't want to get their best friend back? Because I know I would. I would I would love to, like, reconnect a relationship that I feel like was really meaningful to me. And I'm sure anybody else feels the same way. So I just think that life is too short to wonder what if. Life is too short to think about a friendship and wonder how this could have gone if this hadn't happened or if I had done this or if I was evolved or if I... All of these things, you know, I just think life is way too fucking short to sit and think about it. We may as well just do it. Like, I won't lie to you. I was thinking about sending that message for a while, a while. And I probably sat with that for too long. And it doesn't matter now, but I just think that you can't be just wondering how things could go if you did this and if you did that. I just think that we're all gonna die one day and why why should we be left with regrets or what ifs so yeah i think you should fucking send that message i think you should make that phone call send that email whatever it is that you deem necessary it's not always easy but that's okay because it'd be like that it'd be like that <laughs> that is my advice do it because it'd be like that <laughs> but yeah man i don't know i just think that like everyone deserves to have peace and if doing something like that brings you peace, then I think you should do it. The worst that can happen, but they don't reply. They leave you on red. And you know what's going to happen after that? 
you're gonna get over it. You, you will. Maybe you'll be sad for a day, you know? Maybe you, you won't be hurt. After like day five of no response, I was like, damn, I tried, you know? A little bit of disappointment. So I was like, hey, I tried. And I just think that that's the worst case scenario. You get left on red. What are they gonna do? Cuss you out over, over fucking Facebook Messenger? Sorry, I'm showing my age. Oh my god. Over Snapchat? That's what the kids are using, right? Snapchat, I think. <laughs> I just opened my microwave and I forgot I had a cinnamon from last night. Wow. You might be hurt that they didn't reply for a few days, but you're gonna get over it. And you know what? You doing this and bringing yourself that peace, I guarantee you, is pr probably some part of your healing journey. And you will probably attract a new friend into your life. I'm telling you, I know it sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like kind of cliche, like, okay. I just think that, like, bringing ourselves this level of peace is usually a sign that we're ready for the next chapter and finally letting go of, like, said friendship or whatever it is to you will make room for abundance. And it's like what I always say, you know, when I'm talking about, like, having to purge your items to make room for new, you know? It's like that, like, sometimes you have to let go in order to fully move on to the next. Who knows, maybe I felt slightly closed off with friendships because I found, oh, like, no friendship compared to this or this or that. I don't think I felt that way, but like, who knows, maybe subconsciously I did. Maybe now that I'm finally able to let go, I can be more open to new relationships and things like that. My food is done. It looks good, right? Teriyaki, salmon with green beans and rice. All right, this video is getting pretty long, so I'm gonna try the food, get a little live taste test, and then probably head out. Mm-hmm. My meals never disappoint. Even when I throw shit together, you hope for the best. It tastes so good, you know? It tastes so good, let's try the broccoli. I feel like it's undercooked, but we'll see. Mmm! It's cooked to perfection! Oh my god. That might be one of the best broccolis I've made so far. I don't even know what I put in it. But anyways, long story short. Should you reach out to your ex homie? Yes. But just no. It might not go the way that you want it to. You only do it if you're prepared for that. If you're not prepared for it, wait. Just wait until you're ready. And then reach out. What's meant for you will not miss you. I'm gonna go eat this off camera. But let me know what your situation is right now if you need advice. I got you in the comments. Go off. Please, please leave a comment. It really helps me out. It really does. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. The way that I'm enjoying my food in front of me. And I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.